okay, going to refute yet more non-dispensational heresy from Stephen Anderson. A common belief of non-dispensational heretics like Anderson is they will say that salvation in the Old Testament was by basically faith in Jesus Christ and that they were looking forward to the cross, which is ridiculous heresy. I'm going to go to some scripture proving that salvation indeed was by faith in the Old Testament. It wasn't by faith in Jesus Christ because there are prophecies about Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, obviously. Uh, Psalms 22, Psalm 69, uh, you know, I think Psalms, not Psalms, Isaiah 53. There's many prophecies about Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, but they weren't saved by looking forward to Jesus Christ. That's that's the, the key difference. They were not preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for salvation in the Old Testament. I'm going to go to some scripture that proves that point. Exodus chapter 32, verses 30 to 33. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go to up unto the Lord, preventure, I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So look at this. Verse 30, he's having to go up and make an atonement for their sins. And verse 33, basically God's saying he's going to blot them out of their book. Whoever made the calf, he's going to blot them out of the book. God's book. What does it mean to be blotted out of the book? You have to have been in that book, and now you're taken out. But they had, I guess they had eternal security in the Old Testament. They were still sealed with the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. No, they weren't. They could be blotted out of the book. And notice how verse 30 says, I'll make an atonement for your sin. Because these non-dispensational heretics like Anderson, they'll say that salvation, they said that basically they were believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that it was effective back in the Old Testament. Then why did Moses have to go up and make an atonement for their sin? What was the point of animal sacrifices? Some of them try to say, well, it was a uh, symbolic. Uh, no, it wasn't. So every, most of the verses about animal sacrifices say it was an atonement for their sin. It wasn't just symbolic. And this is the example of that. Moses is having to go up and make an atonement for their sin. But why would he have to do that if they're saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? And another common tactic of heretics like Anderson, these non-dispensational heretics, is they'll say, oh, you're preaching hyper-dispensationalism. You're promoting hyper-dispensationalism. People who say, call this hyper-dispensationalism, do not know what hyper-dispensationalism is. Hyper-dispensationalism is basically you have two bodies of Christ and that you can only go to Paul for your doctrine. That's not what I believe at all. I don't promote that. I don't believe that. Uh, Hyper-dispensationalism is heresy, obviously. Hyper-dispensationalism, basically hyper-dispensationalists, they say you can't go beyond Paul. You can only go to Paul and there's only there's two bodies of Christ, the body before. and it, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't believe that way. And any true dispensationalist will not believe that way, obviously. Very, very clear. So people who say, call this hyper-dispensationalism are just, just prove that they're ignorant of what hyper-dispensationalism is. But continuing on, Ezekiel 18, verses 20 to 24. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall, not bear, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness which he, that he hath done, shall, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness, and committeth iniquity, and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. Notice, because in the clips I'm going to play, Anderson says that they were not, they didn't have to keep the law for salvation. Well, what, why does, um, what is it, why does uh, verse 21 say, and keep all my statues, and he shall surely live and not die? 
They're having to keep the statutes. They're having to turn from wickedness. Look at this. Turn from his sins that he hath committed. But then it said, and notice how verse 20 also says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. What does it mean when your soul dies? You go to hell when your soul dies. And notice how verse 24 says, In his sin, in them shall he die. What does it mean to die in your sin? You go to hell. It's talking about someone dying in their sins and going to hell because they didn't turn from their wickedness. They turned back to their wickedness. So they had to basically turn from a sinful way and basically keep the statutes and commandments or else they would die in their sin. Their soul would die. But they're saved by faith in Jesus Christ? I don't think so. They're not saved by faith in Jesus Christ. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 26 to 28. Oh, sorry, Ezekiel 18. Yeah. yeah, Ezekiel 18, sorry, not... I think I said 16, verse 26 to 28. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive, because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. So again, he's saving his soul because he's turning away from wickedness. He's living a right, a right and pure life. But they're saved by faith in Jesus Christ? No. They had, there was an element of works that were involved. They had to basically turn from wickedness to save their soul. Again, what does it mean when your soul dies? What does it mean when you're saving your soul? In the New Testament, Jesus Christ is the one who saves our soul. We don't save our own souls. But in the Old Testament, under the law of Moses, they had to turn away from their wickedness to save their soul. If they didn't, their soul would die. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. They're not saved by faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And on this thing of, of they're, they're saved by looking forward to the cross, uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 43 to 45, Luke chapter 18, verses 31 to 34, and Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 to 23, all contain examples of Jesus Christ telling his disciples uh, and mentioning, you know, the, the law and the prophets are saying, I'm going to die, I'm going to be, you know, arrested, I'm going to be crucified on the cross. And the apostles, who were all Jewish, the disciples who were Jewish, were saying they didn't understand. They said, you know, huh? I mean, they didn't understand it. That's, again, Luke chapter 9, verses 43 to 45. Luke chapter 18, verses 31 to 34. And Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 and 23. Read them. Just go ahead and read those passages. And Jesus tells them what was going to go on. He mentions it's prophesied in the law and the prophets. And they didn't understand what he was saying. So if it was an Old Testament belief that... He was going to die on the cross and they were going to put their faith, if, if they are going to basically put their faith in Jesus Christ for salvation back in the Old Testament, uh, why does it say that they understood not what he was saying? Because again, it was prophesied back in the Old Testament, but they weren't trusting in that for salvation. If so, they would just say, oh yeah, yeah, we know what you're talking about, yeah. Uh, no, they didn't understand what he was saying. But, don't have time to go into that. I showed that in another video of basically proving that they basically were not saved by looking forward to the cross. It's in my series of non-dispensationalism debunked. But if, if again, if, if they knew, if, if there was an Old Testament basically practice of putting your faith in Jesus Christ for salvation, then how come Jesus Christ mentions about the prophets prophesying his death on the cross, and the apostles and disciples were like, they didn't understand what he was saying. They said, you know, be it far from me. They understood not what he was saying. Not going to go into that. But here are the clips from Anderson. This is from his sermon called, uh, what is it called, Non-Dispensationalism non Debunked, or no, not, it's called Dispensationalism Debunked, sorry, I was thinking of my video series, yeah, it's called Dispensationalism Debunked, and here is, this is at the, uh, what's the mark, this is uh, from the 4 minute and 56, this is 4 minutes and 56 seconds in, 4 minute and 56 second mark, he goes on, you know, just a little tirade, you know, typical of the kind of the mind control type of Baptist uh, formula, just yelling and screaming and stuff. Let's get right into this. Let me read for you from the Bible. Look at John 1, 17. The Bible reads, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Okay? Here's what Schofield says in his little note at the bottom. Listen carefully. As a dispensation, grace begins with the death and resurrection of Christ. The point of testing is no longer legal obedience as the condition of salvation, but acceptance or rejection of Christ. So he says right here that before Jesus died on the cross, it was whether you obeyed God's law that got you into heaven. Um, yes, that's what Ezekiel 18 teaches. You had to, 
You have to basically keep the statutes. You have to turn from your wickedness. And that's how you save your soul. That's how. That's why it says a soul that sinneth it shall die. So yes, you know, I'm not any kind of, you know, I'm not like some kind of Schofield person or whatever. Uh, I'm a King James Bible believer. I'm not like a Schofieldite or something like that. But he was right. Schofield was right. Basically, there was an element of works that were involved in the Old Testament. Again, read Ezekiel 18. It proves all of that. But non-dispensational heretics like Anderson can't see that. And on this thing of the New Testament, a uh, quick little side note. According to Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 to 18, the New Testament did not begin until after the death of Jesus Christ. So I just wanted to point that out. You can read Hebrews 9, uh, chapter 9, verse 15 to 18. It makes it clear that the New Testament did not officially begin until after the death of Jesus Christ. So I just wanted to point that out. But let's continue. And that after Jesus died and rose again, you just have to accept or reject the free gift. Just believe on Christ. But before he died and rose again, you had to obey the law. Well, here's the, let's get into the Bible now. Here's the problem with that. Turn, if you would, to John chapter 3. Here's the problem with that. There's been no one who's ever lived who has kept God's law. And Anderson is correct. Not a single person has been able to keep the law 100% uh, perfectly. That was the point of animal sacrifices. They had to do an animal sacrifice to atone for their sins. Again, just look up every time the word animal sacrifice appears in the Bible, you know, atonement for sins. The animal sacrifices were an atonement for your sins. They weren't just symbolic or anything like that. Uh, just, again, read uh, throughout the book of Leviticus, read throughout the book of, of Numbers, read the book of Exodus. The animal sacrifices were the atonement for sins. So, yes, they could not keep the law perfectly. That was why they had to have animal sacrifices to cover sins. I mean, it, it's like... It's simple stuff, but you know Anderson can't see that. Like most non-dispensational heretics, let's continue. Except the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen. The Bible said, even in the Old Testament, he said, "There's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not." It says in James 2:10, "For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all." For he that said, "Do not commit adultery," said also, "Do not kill." Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. He says maybe you broke one and you didn't break the other. Either way, you broke enough of it to be a transgressor of the law. And the Bible teaches that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. So if obedience to the law was a way to be saved, then nobody would be saved. Well, then I guess you might have to throw out uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 18 and 21. Because just like Ezekiel chapter 18, Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 18 and 21 also is clear that keeping the, basically living right and turning from wickedness was required to basically save your soul. So I guess we're going to have to throw out Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 18 and 21, which basically says you have to warn the wicked to deliver your soul, that kind of stuff. I guess we're going to have to throw out Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 8 to 9. I mean, so many scriptures you're going to have to throw out if you're going to teach that salvation in the Old Testament was by faith in Jesus Christ. That's ridiculous. So Ezekiel 18, Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 18 to 21, Ezekiel 33, verses 8 to 9, so many scriptures. The book of Leviticus, it's all works in the book of Leviticus. I mean, ridiculous. Let's continue. But they claim, well, before <laughs> Jesus died on the cross and rose again, people had to be saved by works. They had to be saved by obedience to the law. But now in the so-called dispensation of grace, because they believe in seven different dispensations, in the dispensation of grace, we're just saved by grace through faith. Look at John chapter 3. Let's see if this, if this doctrine lines up with scripture. Now what he's going to do is he's going to go to the book of John, which is definitely before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ up until John 19. And he's going to say, see, they were basically saying faith in Jesus Christ before the crucifixion. Well, here's the thing about the book of John. Here's the thing that non-dispensational heretics can't understand. There are certain books in the Bible that are transitional books. For example, uh, Exodus chapter 20 is transitional because now they're given, they're, they've revealed God has now revealed the law to them, so now they're under the law. So it's, it's transitional. Uh, the book of Acts is transitional because they first were preaching the gospel to the Jews, and now they went to basically now both Jews and Gentiles. The book of Hebrews is transitional to now they were under basically Paul's ministry, to now under the time of Jacob's trouble. Basically under grace to now the time of Jacob's trouble. Because that's why a lot of what the book of Hebrews says lines up with the Revelation. Because it's for people in the time of Jacob's trouble. And the book of John, I believe, is transitional from under the law to under grace. Because a lot of what's written in the book of John 
mirrors and is very similar to what Paul wrote. So it's, it's a transitional book. But here's what they do. They quote from a transitional book and say, see, they were, it was by faith in Jesus Christ before the crucifixion. No, it's a transitional book. They're transitioning from under the law to under grace. That's simple. It's simple to understand, but again, non-dispensational heretics can't see that. So, let's continue. In John 3.36 is what I want to show you. This is John the Baptist preaching. He says right here, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Now, let me ask you this. Is that in the present tense or the future tense? Present. That's the present tense. He didn't say that those who believe are going to get everlasting life later. He said, he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. That's right now. And he says uh, in John 5, flip over to John chapter 5, verse 24. Now, you say, well, what, what's your point, Pastor Anderson? Well, the point is that this is all preaching before Jesus died on the cross. He's right. It is preaching before Jesus died on the cross. Again, the book of John is transitional. So he's quoting from a transitional book and trying to use it to debunk dispensationalism. It's a flawed theology. Let's continue. I mean, had Jesus died on the cross in John chapter 3 when John the Baptist was preaching? This is three years before Jesus died on the cross. And here we've got John the Baptist saying, hey, if you believe on Jesus Christ, you're saved. You have eternal life. Yeah, notice how he just raised his voice. Oh, you believe in Jesus Christ? You're saved. You know, it's a lot of these Baptist preachers, they do that. You know, I'm, I'm not against Baptists. I'm just saying that some of these Baptists, they do use mind control by just yelling and stuff. But he's very, he's very right. He was preaching faith in Jesus Christ because they're transitioning from being under the law to under grace. Again, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15 and 18, the New Testament did not begin until after the death of Jesus Christ. So obviously, when you get, as you get closer to that time, you're going to reveal it, obviously. But when you're quoting from a transitional book to prove salvation has been by faith in Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, very, very flawed theology. And again, it would contradict Ezekiel 3, 18 and 21, at the entirety of Ezekiel 18, Ezekiel 33, verses 8 to 9. So many scriptures it would contradict. So again, this is the heresy you get yourselves into when you're a non-dispensational. And again, I'm not hyper-dispensationalist. Um, anyone who says that this is hyper-dispensationalism has no idea of what a hyper-dispensationalist is. Again, hyper-dispensationalism is that they believe there are two bodies of Christ and that you can only go to Paul for doctrine. No, it's not true. I don't believe that way. I'm not a hyper-dispensationalist. So don't, don't be deceived by these non-dispensational heretics. It is a uh, very, very wicked heresy. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.